everyone this is three questions with brian faulkner there you go man got the music there you go <laughs> and it's cool talking to you because i know that we had uh dr marcus Beelin, uh yeah. just and i'm saying and he's a a colleague of yours in the same district so uh dr Beelin, if you listen <laughs> he loved that i heard that <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah so hey uh brian we we connected years ago so I, I really appreciate you being on here brian is a very accomplished principal uh obviously a super easygoing guy we just had a fun conversation before that we will never publish but it was great <laughs> to have hey but brian in your role as a principal and your role in education um, all the work that you actually do think about, um, you know, some of the teachers that made an impact on you. And so like, when you think about one teacher who had an impact on you, whether it's, you know, a colleague, maybe it was a student, who's someone you think of and why? I, look, I've been blessed my entire life to have a lot of people, but I think of Mrs. Welch because I had her twice in high school. And if, you know, if you picked up on anything with me, I like to have fun. I like to laugh. Yes, right. And I was not afraid to be the class clown. I wasn't afraid to uh, slip in a joke when it wasn't the right time. And, you know, my freshman year, I was trying to fit in. And, and Mrs. Welch always handled me. Right. I would say with love. I mean, she she, she truly embodied the uh, praise in public, punish in private had many conversations with her after class hours, right. had many times where she's like, can I talk to you in the hallway really quick? But but on top of that, she just always cared about me. She cared about me academically, yes, but she cared about me as a person. And it wasn't until, I can't remember now if it was my junior or senior year, I had a, a, a literary elements class and I'd fall asleep all the time because I'm a pretty active, I'm still an active yeah. person. Uh, you know, I played baseball, played the drums, played music, did did a lot of things after school and was getting home late. And it, during silent reading time, I would fall asleep. And I never forget, she pulled me out into the hallway and she asked me, what's going on? Are you OK? Do you need anything? And I told her I couldn't sleep because I'm so active. And, and she talked to me about when you warm milk, it creates a chemical that makes you drowsy. Try yeah. that. And I did. And it helped. And, and she was also the one that really help me with my writing. I, I, I don't claim to be a great writer. I've been writing since high school. I have journals upon journals and now folders electronically of just writings, whether it's, you know, thoughts on education or just me, thoughts on me personally and who I am and where I want to go in life and my goals. But she introduced me to Emerson. And when I read mm -hmm. Self-Reliance, I, I was hooked. And that's the kind of writing I wanted to take off with. And she was there every step of the way. She just cared about me as a person Love it. and I will always remember her because of that. Well, and it's amazing that you talk about how basically, you know, you goofed around, joked around yeah. that connection, but then you're, you know, getting into like, actually like some, some really deep reading that probably would not have happened if it wasn't for that. Yeah. I, I guarantee you, cause I know I thought this, everyone was thinking is like, were you in there twice? Cause you had her for two different classes or. <laughs> Were you in there twice because you, you didn't make it through the one year, right? <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. I'm like, oh, yeah. Two different classes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, two different classes. So is it Mrs. Welch? Is that you said? Mrs. It? Welch. Yep. Linda Welch. Linda Welch. Oh, shout out. You got more than ever. So, hey, so you currently are a, a, a principal. Correct. And I'm, it's actually quite interesting. You know, I think when you become an administrator, uh kind of seeing how other people lead buildings but it's it's a very isolating position right uh like you sometimes you feel you no know, like we we collaborate with our colleagues but sometimes it's like it's like it's all on you I, all eyes on you right yep and uh, the one thing i always say is that like great principles uh often when they're bad everyone notices but when they're when they're great like they don't necessarily get credit and they just kind of like fly under the radar so like when you Think about that. You think about your experience as an administrator. Who's like an administrator? Where you know, again, as a you know, maybe as a student, maybe as one of your colleagues. Who's someone that you think of that inspired you and why? Well, it has to be Ron Krause, my principal when I was a teacher. Uh, Ron is everything I think a leader should be. He cared about us. He knew us really well. He supported us. I'm I've always been a creative, like let's let's get as innovative as possible type right. of person. And he supported that wholeheartedly. He he would challenge me or encourage me, like, take that risk in your classroom. Do that learning activity. Do this. Do that. 
And he was just so positive about it. And kids loved him. We loved him. He just, in my opinion, was what a leader should be. And I, I feel like he was ahead of his time because this was right. 20 some years ago now. And uh, it, oh, it's wow. it's awesome because I still keep in touch with Ron. We, we text occasionally and I try to make it a point a few times a year to just say, hey, thanks for always being a great leader for me and helping right. me out. But he was everything that I want to do. A lot of the times I'll tell myself, hey, what would Ron do in this situation? And, right. and, and that's you know, the inspiration that I have used for, I mean, this is my 10th or 11th year now as a principal. I still think of this guy. I mean, that's the kind of impact right. he had on me, but he had that impact on everyone. I mean, so my hiring class, we, we, there was like six of us, four right. of us are all principals now. And that's, and I truly believe it's because of Ron. He inspired us to want to do more and be more. And, and so I can't say enough about Ron Krause. He's, he's the man. He's awesome. Well, Ron Krause. You happen to be listening, right? Awesome. I, the, the, one, the one thing, you know, I, like, I don't know why, you know, my brain goes in different directions every time I hear these stories. And I thought about, you were saying, like, my principal encouraged, like, they encouraged me to take risks, to try different things. And my brain at that time thought, of like, mm, I remember having principals that were like not doing that. And I guarantee you, other people listening were like, man, you know, I wish I had that. Like, I wish I had that. And I think when you said they they kind of inspire, like everyone kind of felt that it's because sometimes when you are saying no to someone who is trying different things, other people don't say anything, but they notice. And they're like, well, I'm not even, I'm not even going to bother. Right. Yeah. And they see that too. Right. So like, I think there is a ripple effect when you are encouraging maybe some people that are willing to take risks early on for the people that are maybe a little bit more reluctant, resistant that then they see like, okay, okay. that So the boss is okay with that. So maybe I should try. Right. But if they are seeing like, oh, Brian, like just got in trouble for that, there is no way I'm I'm doing anything, right? And I, oh, I think that I think that's a lot of times we, like a lot of times it's it's not the the direct interactions, it's what we see on the side that makes a makes an impact. So, um, no. awesome, I love it, and I love the connection between the two stories. So, when you think of your first year of teaching, and you said you've been in you know in education for at least twenty plus years, right? Right, yep. you're yep. you're probably like me. Remember, do you remember when you could say, I could say how long you've been in education for? You could say a year and now you're like kind of just estimating. Yes. I'm like, I can't you're, remember. You're like kind of like, you know, aroundish. <laughs> and that's kind of, that's kind of the thing now. Yeah, so, you know, so 20 plus, however that could be, could be 40 for all we know. It's just over 20. That's all we, Might that's be. all we know. Right. That's all so, I know. When you look back to your first year of teaching, who is someone or what what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? If you go pull Brian over and say, like, you know, don't do that or you should do that. Like, what would you say? Focus on being student centered mm -hmm. and, and that. I mean, I could probably talk for hours on what that means or, you know, what I what I could talk about. But uh, really, it's about being student centered, because if you're being student centered, you're you're building relationships with kids. You're providing mm -hmm. structure and routines that need that that's needed for them to be successful. But you also then are looking at how each learner learns best and you're providing an environment where they can be successful because they're they're being asked to learn in ways that, you know, piggyback off of their strengths. So being student centered is one of the most important things I would tell a first year teacher. And, and there are so many things I do when when we have first year teachers come into the building where I really emphasize how to be student centered and how to do it the right way. So that would be the advice I'd give myself. I was, you know, and this is years ago, I was so hung up on, you know, because everyone tells you discipline is going to be so difficult right. classroom management's going to be so difficult. That's all I focused on. And I didn't really focus on getting to know the students. I was just so caught up in like, well, they got to come in and they got to sit down and they got to do this. And right. it wasn't focused on really, providing that environment until I got comfortable with that. So I, I've, I've taken that lesson as a principal now and said, how can I set up these first year teachers or younger teachers for success in a student centered environment? So that would be the advice I would give to my first year self is be student. So I, got, I, I got to ask you this. And what what is the what is the line between where you are like really student centered as opposed to like your buddies with the students. Do you know what I mean? Cause I, I think like, I think about that is that like, was I student centered? Like, I guess in some ways I was not necessarily with the learning though. Do you know what I mean? Like with everything else, like yep. that's, that's what I'm kind of thinking about is that, 
you know, I got along with the students. I like, you know, play basketball at lunch with the students. I would do all this stuff. But then when it got down to teaching, I like, I also remember saying like, you will learn the way I teach. Right. Like, <laughs> yep. right. Yep. So like, where, where is that? And maybe I, maybe I just answered my own question, but you that, did. I think, I think, <laughs> well, thanks for being on the podcast. No, so yeah, the, we'll take care everyone. <laughs> yeah. So like I, that, I think that's something I, I thought of when I doing that. Cause I was like, yeah, like I was very student focused. I don't know. Student centered learning, you know, like yeah. I, I think there's, those yeah. are two different things. Right. So any thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, you have to build a community, right? And, mm -hmm. and sometimes building a community, like looking at my specific situation where I was so focused on classroom management and discipline, I think building a community is t sitting down with the kids and saying, you know, what are some of the expectations or routines we should have in this classroom that help us be successful? Right. But then where you kind of step into that teacher role, I guess you could say, is when that that community agreement or expectation, you right. know, when someone's not meeting it, then that's my job to step in and say, hey, you know, we talked about this routine of coming in and whatever it is that we decided right. that would help us be successful. You just, you ultimately have to create that mentoring environment of, hey, we, we agreed upon this and this is what we need to do to be successful. And I think sometimes just having those moments or opportunities where we can have some of those reality checks, that's where it's, you know, they'll still look at you now as a mentor, as a coach, as a guide uh, in the classroom, even though you're being student centered. And that, that's one example. I don't want to, I just try to pair it or pair it with um, the way I was thinking as a first year teacher. But, you know, with learning, a lot of it, too, is how do we build somewhat right. of a learning, learner profile? Well, dude, hey, it was it's awesome to connect with you. I'm looking forward to the second podcast uh, yep. to, to be able to talk to you more. But uh you, you obviously your staff is blessed to have well unless they, unless you're not like this with them then. no i am <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then, then they're all <laughs> hey but everyone make sure you connect with uh brian on twitter uh at brian faulkner 44 right yes. and uh and make sure you say hi to dr Beelan for me he's awesome guys thank so you. um thanks for everyone for listening brian thank you so much for being on the podcast thank you we got the outro outro music <laughs> everything man. Thanks, everybody.